So welcome everybody and today we're talking about um, whether you would like to be free. Um, I haven't met anyone by the way who said they didn't want to be free so that's funny. Um, if you want to get more free as an actor but also as a person and the reason that I wanted to um, look at this topic with you guys today is for two reasons. So. I'm realizing that a lot of actors who um, finish their reset journey, um, so finish their program with me, really talk a lot about the effects that this freedom has on their life. Um, it's not that they don't talk about the results and the tangible um, outcomes that they get in their acting career, but inevitably they really talk about how it impacted the rest of their life. So um, their relationships, their family, their love life, their business, their money situation, some stuff with friends, some um, even some some like healing, some like conditions that they had that suddenly disappeared. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to throw that topic here because because of course if if your life is more free, inevitably you're more free as an actor. And if you're in this type of acting, which has nothing to do with the faking and the pretending and the technique, but is more about really being fully alive, um, when you act and be a, being 100% you and authentic, well then inevitably um, what's happening in your life has a direct impact on your acting too. The other reason why I wanted to throw this topic in today is because more and more in this community in our instinctive, um, uh, instinctive actor society, more and more we have people who join our community who are not actors. So some of you may be singers, writers, directors. Um, we have quite a bit of therapists, dancers, musicians, athletes, directors, storytellers. We, we have a little bit of everything. And, um, I think that's also a strong indication that um, you know the the topic of your instinct and how much you have access to it and how you're resistant to it is really more than an acting topic and it really is more of a universal topic. Um, so that's why I thought you know it's it's interesting for life in general for you to be free and um, and that has repercussions on on your career. So I will post. Um, a free training for you guys um, on how to be more instinctive and again that's valuable for anyone that's um, gotten into this community and is interested in in uh, being more present and in being more alive. Um, I hear a lot of people around me in general um, talking about how you know how things are not working like having funky health issues um, like having a business and being uncomfortable with doing the business and with doing the sales and with dealing with your time. I, I hear a lot of public speakers who are super uncomfortable and who don't actually enjoy the public public speaking part. Um, this morning, someone reached out in the group and was saying, you know, just to, to deal with general setbacks and life situations and the inability to move forward by a clouded mind. What I'm not saying is that we should be happy all the time and we should just be positive and just, you know, just put a mask of positivity on top of all the shit that you've got going on. No, I'm not saying that. We're humans and life happens and we get hit and we get on the floor. But then what what matters is what are the resources that we have? What are the tools that we have? What are the habits that we have? into you know getting back up how do we what do we have in our hands to react to what life throws at us what i think that we should start by doing maybe is looking at the um looking at why why are we feeling all these things all these discomforts disconnections unable to communicate just being just being stopped with our problems right not not being able to move forward, to take it on. It's just like a general um, feeling of victimhood, maybe. Um, that things are happening to us that we're at the effect of them and we have no way of getting out of them. 
the way that we raise our kids, they go to a very specific uh, uh, humanitarian school where they get no academics and um, there's no authority um, and there's no curriculum beyond their own curriculum. So it's child-based curriculum. They come in the morning, whatever it is that they want to do, that's what they'll do. And no one will tell them, no, you can't do that. Or you can't eat at this time. Or, you can't go to the bathroom now. Or, you have to sit down now. Or, you have to shut up now. We have to learn this. There's none of that. There's no grades, no homework, no academics chopped down their throat, no authority, no nothing. They're just, you know, encouraged and nurtured um, to discover who they are and, um, and, and to dive fully into uh, being themselves. So that's what they're encouraged to be doing. They're not encouraged to become little products of society. They're encouraged to be their, their real own self. So what happens is that um, when you're in a school like that and, and something occurs, a problem, a conflict with a friend, an outside circumstance, well, the kids are invited to take care of it by themselves, so no one is telling them how to deal with it. No one is telling them what's right or wrong, but they're encouraged to, oh, well, look at it and, and figure it out and not be at the effect of it. Because in traditional ed education, from morning to evening, you're told what to do, what to think, what, how to behave, what to feel, what to eat, when to pee, when to talk, when to stand. So you're not in any way encouraged and nurtured to discover yourself and to, you know, muscle that up. So when you've had, let's say, a relationship with someone, whether it's a family member, a friend, or um, a partner, and something's been going on and you haven't said anything for the last five years, well, that five-year issue and problem has started to grow and become something bigger and become something that it's not anymore, that it was originally, and you probably gave it some meaning and some justifications and some judgment and some hate. All of this stuff accumulates, and you resist probably just going up to the person and saying, okay, well, I feel that this doesn't work for me, and, and, and this situation doesn't work. Can we talk about it? And, and that's actually it. So you can either like, you know, carry the stuff for five years, or you, you can actually work on the problem. And, and, and of course, people don't do that. They know they could do that. But the fear, the, 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 the blocks, the shame, the stress, um, and all the wiring that you have been given, which is don't do what you feel and think and want to do, but do what you're told, comes into play here. And so you're facing a problem and suddenly your wiring says, don't work on it. Don't, don't, don't be authentic. Basically don't do what you feel, which is this is not working. I need to take care of it. Don't do what you think. So I can't share my opinion and, and, and behave like everybody else. Okay. So the other person is not saying anything. I shouldn't say anything either. So, you know, you might want to work through those problems, but your wiring prevents you to. So I think that's why when people do the reset journey for a month and, you know, um, get out of the trap of their conditioning and reconnect with their real human pure self, well, suddenly um, feeling is okay, thinking is okay, wanting is okay, and, and you have new tools to address the stuff that comes into you. And I think there's something that goes beyond that because a lot of people do the reset journey and suddenly have their funky health issues that disappear. Um, well, guess what? Funky health issues happen because you're completely disconnected to yourself and at one point your system is like, listen, you're not hearing what I'm trying to say here, so I'm, I'm gonna speak louder. Something's not working, completely disconnected, and I'm gonna manifest a dis-ease somewhere. So um, that's why I think we're seeing all these magic, encouraging, incredible, um, fantastic results in life when we reset our instrument. I think that's why a lot of therapists do the journey because they are um, taking another route than usual therapy takes. They are actually physically reconnecting their instrument um, and they're not looking into, you know, why why am I doing this? Oh, because my dad did it. So that would be like a vulgar sum up of what therapy is. And 
reset is absolutely not about that. Um, it's very therapeutical. It's definitely transformational. There's no information in there. There's no teaching. There's no learning. But um, but it so happens that, yeah, it absolutely impacts your life, your relationships, your health, your bank account. Um, it's pretty incredible when you finally become you what you're capable of.